Welcome to Irish Footy Vlogs. I'm delighted to welcome Daniel O'Reilly of Shelburne today. How are you, Daniel? You well? Not too bad. Thanks for having me, Keith. Good stuff. So you're back training now. How does that feel? Yeah, it's great to be back. We've been back since Monday. Um, it's great to be back into, firstly, a routine, and then secondly, great to be back with the lads, even though we're split up. But um, no, it's it's good to be back. Um, the lads all look good, and we're uh, looking forward to hopefully starting the league soon. And what's the fitness like compared to going back, say, in a pre-season? Does it feel like another pre-season? I know you're in small groups, so it's a little different, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it would have a small sense of a pre-season, but I think this time around, like normally pre-season lads would be going away in the off-season and they'd, I wouldn't say they'd come back out of shape, but they wouldn't be like flying fit. But like since Monday, the, the tempo and training has been really, really good. The lads have looked after themselves over the lockdown. And I think... What will come into play there is like a lot of people would have been at home and they wouldn't have known what to do. They would have had all the time in the world to go running, to do strength sessions. We did our Zoom sessions. So like in that sense, I think we've ticked all the boxes. So the lads have, it's kind of like we've come back in and we kind of left, uh, got back on where we left it off before all of this happened. Like, you know. Yeah, that's good in fairness. So, do you think we'll be back in August? So I know we're penciled in for August a little bit, aren't we? But um, there's been a lot of um, uncertainty, let's say, in terms of coming back or not coming back or when we're coming back. Is that difficult mentally for the players, though? Yeah, it is. Like it's there's been a lot of him and on the last few weeks. I'm sure you've seen it as much as I have. And there's been certain dates put forward, and then they're changing. Like it's just constantly. It, you don't know where you stand. But um, I do actually feel quite confident that, like what they've said now, that I I think we can gear towards for us as a club and players. We can gear towards that date. Obviously, you want to hear. Uh, you want to see it set in stone. But um, I think it's promising at the moment. I won't. I won't say too much more because I don't want to come back to bite me. Like you know. I know. Yeah. And how would you find playing behind closed doors? Like um, the fan, like fans. I know as a player, you probably just want to get out on the pitch and get a start, and then hopefully let fans filter in. I suppose that's the general consensus, isn't it? Yeah, you'd, you'd have to get used to like obviously walking out, and um, it would probably feel like more of a friendly at the start but you kind of get need to get that out of your mentality because obviously you're going you're going to be going into a league game and there's points at stake there's positions in the table we know where we want to be by the end of the season so you kind of have to take that factor out um, and then in other ways I think if you're playing away from home you can possibly I don't know take it as an advantage because there won't be the home fans of the opposition on your back so maybe you can be a bit more relaxed. So there's there's positives and negatives, but I think at the moment we'll take whatever we can get just to get back playing. Yeah, how would you feel? I know they talked about this, but it might necessarily be the case. There was talk about having 18 games this season. That would be it. So that would be me. That would mean going back for 13 matches. How would you feel about that? Or do you think that that's not a great option in reality? Or um, well, obviously, we talked about that there was a lot of options they're talking about cutting one round, and now they're saying two rounds. But yeah, hopefully. it's getting closer and closer to time. So, like, if we were to start in August, they're looking at a time frame from August to November. So they're probably putting into consideration of how many games can we actually fit in. Um, so it's it's not great in the sense that you're only playing eighteen games. Well, look, at the moment, we'll take it. Um, and it could like it could be good for certain clubs to possibly put it, uh, look into Europe. Um, I don't know what they're doing with the Cups at the moment. I think they're looking at the FAI. But, again, I think the League Cup just thought it's just scrapping the League Cup, isn't it? Basically. Yeah, and the other smaller ones. Yeah. So. But um, the other thing is, I suppose, I think ideally, even if they get fit in one more round of games even and maybe even have a shorter pre-season because the pre-season does tend to be long enough over in Ireland in fairness isn't it? Yeah well if you're taking into consideration we have another one now but um, <laughs> Yeah exactly that's it too yeah It's it's dragged out because obviously you're normally coming in after an off season and then you're in for six seven maybe eight weeks depending on the fixtures but um, 
like it can be dragged out. So now you're like, right, we're back. We want to be probably back two or three weeks and then get straight in. But obviously there's circumstances outside our control that we have to um, look at, like, you know. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, you were over in Fulham for four years when you were young, sir. How old were you when you moved over there? I was 16. I was over and back when I was 15. And then I moved over when I was 16, so till 19. Yeah, was that difficult mentally in terms of moving away at that age to London, basically? Or how did you cope with that side? Yeah, it was actually, yeah. Like, thinking back, at the time, I just kind of got on with it. But, at the, like, looking back, like, I'm 25 now. So, like, that was nine years ago. Like, I was really just a boy, like, you know, um, who was obviously determined to go over and wanted to do well, like every kid would. But looking back, it, it was definitely, it was a massive step because you're moving away from your home. Like, I'd be quite close to my family. So, it was going into someone else's home, which I was oblivious to. Um, but, yeah, no, overall, like, it was a great experience. I think I developed as a person as much as a player. Like, but, um, yeah, it was definitely tough for the first, say, six months or so adjusting because you'd have lads that were going home every weekend, whereas I wouldn't have that yeah, luxury, exactly. like, you know. That's true, actually. What advice would you give to a 15, 16 year old if they were moving over to England in those circumstances, having looked back at it? What advice would you give them? Well, firstly, before you go over, you have to consider is it the right move at the right time? Because obviously, um, the League of Ireland is advancing a lot, like with the younger teams. Whereas I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't really know much about the League of Ireland when I went over. And that's not to disrespect it, it was just not as moving forward as it is now. Like, there was no real 17s or 19s even that was prominent before I moved over. But now it's 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 really good and the standards improve. And so, like, if you're a 15-year-old kid, you have to see the pathway in the future. So, say if you're at Rovers and you want to, you have an opportunity to go over to England, like, you have to look at, right, if I stay at home, maybe I can get to a first team quicker or am I going to go over there and play two years in the youth team that could possibly hamper my development. But it's easy to say that now um, because you just see the shining lights. You see you're going over to England, the, the dream, like, you know. Um, but that would be my advice is definitely to consider it. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, no, don't go because it didn't work out for me because it's, it's an unbelievable opportunity and it's a, it's a life, it's a life teaching um, moments that you learn over there because you're on your own, you're independent, like, but... Um, just definitely consider all options before you go. Yeah, as you say, everyone's kind of different, but I think ideally, if possible, if youngsters could stay and play in the Premier Division or the First Division, whichever, for a couple of years until they mature a little bit, they're playing men's football. I also get the impression that you're looked after a little bit better than you would be in England. It's a bit more brutal, is it, when you go over as well? Would you feel that or? Yeah, like you're kind of obviously you're in the club, you're training and stuff, yeah. but then you're you're on your own. Then kind of I suppose whether you're with a teammate in digs or whether you're in an apartment or probably won't get to that stage if you're only going over at sixteen. But mm. yeah, like you, you, it's it's a lot of time on your own, so you're kind of left to your own. Like some days you could be in at nine and home at one, and then you have the whole yeah. day, and you're sixteen and you're not at home. Whereas you're at home, you have your mates, you have your family, you have. Just your own comfort, you know, at home, it's different. It's different. Um, so it would be, it, that's definitely an adaption that a kid would have to make when they go over. And if someone's quite like a home bird, it would definitely yeah. make it harder yeah. for them to make the decision. Yeah. But as you say, even at 15 or 16, most people are home birds, aren't they? To a degree. Yeah. It's only when you get even older. 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 18, yeah. So, you know, I mean, that can be difficult enough. I mean, I moved to Kerry for a year when I was 19 and I found that difficult. <laughs> So you know what I mean? Like it's different when you're going. Uh, it carries up. a long way away. <laughs> it is actually it's further than London, isn't it? To be fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you did. Did you have a few loan spells over there as well? Did you play for Hereford or did you get games for them or Bishops? Was another team Bishops Starford? Uh, I, like yeah, it was. I wouldn't <laughs> believe believe everything you'd read, but I I was at Hereford and I was at Eastbourne. They would have been the two English teams I was at. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was at Hereford for probably three or four months and then they went bust and then they ah. went on themselves but um like that was just to play first team just to get experience and kind of see how it went on and after that went kind of went up in the air i came home and signed for bray um, and then I, I actually went back over after uh, two years here i went to eastbourne 
at the time I was uh, seeing someone in, Lo- in London, like I had a girlfriend, so it worked out well. Well, I thought it worked out well, but um, look, they're all experiences in the end. When you're young, when you're young, you can do these things, and um, you obviously want to stay involved in the game, but um, now you want a bit more, like you want a bit more uh, settled. Like, really, you want to be settled. Yeah, settled. Yeah, I was going to say solid. Like, yeah, that would be it. And you played for Longford Town then between 2016 2018. That's you kind of played a good few games for them, so you probably started to feel at home in terms of your development there, did you? Yeah, I felt I felt that I needed the consistency, and yeah. um, I needed to uh, one to play games, but two, like you don't want to be to and from from different clubs. Like um, obviously, if moves opportunities come and you're constantly progressing up the ladder, you're going to take them. But sometimes you just need to sit somewhere and play games, enjoy your football, feel good. And I felt that that really helped me. Um, I felt like I could express myself as a player and show people like over a two, three year period of what I can offer as a player, you know, because you're only getting 10, 15 games at one club, then you're moving on. Like it's very hard to show what you're like. So um, I found that that period at Longford, um, I really enjoyed and I felt I came out of my shell, like, you know, no, it's very difficult. I've spoke to some players and they've said how every pre-season they're looking for a new club. I mean, that must be very difficult. Like, no matter how good you are, like, if you're looking for a new club almost every pre-season, I mean, it's very difficult to find form or settle or that does things to your head, I'd say, as well, doesn't it? But you've been fortunate enough, I suppose. You haven't been too bad in that regard, haven't you not? Yeah. No, not the worst. I've seen worse, but <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm saying, be better, a lot, you know? A lot worse. Yeah. I've seen a lot worse. And, uh, but it has I mean, no fault or choice of their own. Like, you know, that's the problem yeah. with it as well. That's the difficulty. Uh, could be change a manager, could be finances at a club. Um, just a manager comes in, doesn't fancy the player or whatever. That's just the way it is. But um, have you always been a defender, by the way? Um. Yeah, well, up until seven aside, nine aside, I was a... Uh, a winger, like, but then I moved back to centre half. And Some difference, isn't it? Winger central defence. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. The team I was playing for, I could probably play up front. So <laughs> back then, so. Um, but yeah, just going back on to yeah. onto what you're saying about the year to year, like the yeah. in League of Ireland, you've obviously got the uncertainty, and you've got year to like one year contracts. So players can find themselves gone from club to club, and. Like, you know yourself from looking at people's bios that they could be in Galway, they could be in Dublin, then they could be up in Donegal, then down in Cork or Wexford. Like, so people just want to play and obviously they want to probably stay somewhere for longer than one year, but you mightn't get that option, like, as a player. Yeah, it's not easy, but um, I suppose in another way, to flip it, I suppose, that could kind of increase your maybe desire to kind of play well, to say to yourself, well, I mightn't have a contract at the end of the season, so I really need to perform. So from that side of it as well, you don't have the security, but I suppose it depends on the player as well and the mentality of the player really, doesn't it? But it's yeah. different nonetheless, I think. But you moved from Longford then to Finn Harps. How did you find playing up in Donegal? Because where, where were you staying when you were up in Donegal? Where were you staying? Um, I, was, I used to stay over the night before a game up there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then on a Monday, I'd go up and back training and we'd be one or two of us in a car like so we'd chop and change you know um, and yeah it was hard like at the start yeah. it was hard but at the end of the day I just kind of got on with it then and um, I was playing Premier Division football which I felt was the right step at the time I played a few years in the first division and um, so I really wanted a, a good crack of to try get 30 odd games which I got and again, to try to progress up the ladder, I felt I was at the right age to play in the Premier Division. So um, I feel it was definitely a good decision in the end. Um, and they're a great club. They are a great club up there. Um, lovely people. Um, nice place. Obviously, it's far away, but like I wouldn't have any regrets, you know. Oh, that's good. How did you find Ali Horgan? Was it like working with him? <laughs> Everyone smiles when you say that to them. <laughs> Ali's actually he's a gentleman. Like he actually really is, and he he do anything for you. Like if I text him when I was up there to come meet me in Dublin, he'd drive down. Like he wouldn't care. So his his um player relationship and player welfare is really good. But like tactically wise, he knew everything about all the opposition. So we could come in on a Thursday night, and he'd have up on the board the opposing team all 11 players, and very rarely would he get one wrong. He might get one, 
Rom, I don't know how he got the info, but um, like I'd be looking at it and we'd be playing Rovers and he might have someone in and I'd go, is he really going to play? And then the next day he'd be playing, like you know? So, um, like tactically he knew everything and preparation-wise we were always prepared. Like obviously some days you're going to have bad days, but like we were always prepared, like you know, so we could never use that as an excuse. Yeah, no, I was talking to Cameron Soul, who now plays with Finn Harps. He's, uh, I don't think you would have bumped into him, would you? No, you wouldn't have bumped in. You wouldn't have gone. Yeah. Exactly. But, um, yeah, he said the same thing pretty much about Ollie Horgan as well. So, you know, he's very good with the players' relationships. He'll call you up about anything kind of a thing, which is a good thing as well, isn't it? Fairness for a player to hear. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you moved on to Shelburne then. Um, how did that come about exactly? Did you have many more offers, actually? Um, I spoke to one or two teams, yeah. but, like, I I'd spoke to Shells actually... It was before the end of the season, like they, I was speaking to Ian Morris now, it was just brief conversation, he just wanted to register his interest, um, so I spoke to him, um, and I, it was a very positive conversation, and obviously they had won the league, so I knew they were going to be in the Premier Division again, and for me personally, I, I couldn't go back up to Finn Harris because it was just, it was too much for two years, like, you know, and Oli, I said that to Oli, and he completely understood um, nothing against the club, but um, I enjoyed my time there. But um, when Shells, when I met Ian Morris, like it was just he just sounded very positive, and he done his research on me. And then we continued conversations at the end of the season, and from there, I just I kind of seen where the club was going and the, what direction they were going. Um, I didn't see them as just so obviously you want to stay up, but. Um, I didn't see them as just settling as someone who wants to be low, like they want to push over the next few years, you know. So that was a really big factor for me. No, you get that impression with them. And what's Ian Morris like to work with as well? Like he's obviously, is he the youngest manager in the Premier Division? If not, he's very close, but uh, he's a young man himself, like, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, like that was another thing because he's on, only finished playing over yeah. a year. Like, so he's fresh out of the game. He understands what, players needs and what way the game is going nowadays like you know so um and another thing he's a defender played my position so that can only help but um his, his attention to detail is brilliant and like his training session him and craig sexton coach as well very young he's only 28 i think he was at bows and uh, 19 but like he's got all his badges and like he's two of them together are brilliant like you know i even feel like i've learned so much. I know we had the, the brief period of being off with the COVID, but I feel like I've learned a lot so far. And like that's that was one of the reasons why I signed as well, because I want to develop again as a player, not to just sit still, you know. Um, and I think um, Ian's, Ian's been brilliant so far for me. Do you get a big club kind of feel from them as well, though? Yeah, I, I like having played against Shells a few years mm. beforehand with Longford, like obviously it's Shells, like, but. When I was younger, I, I wasn't around. I wasn't really paying attention when they were in the Champions League and stuff like that. But as soon as I, I came, I'm, old, I'm old enough to remember now. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, Deportivo days. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I actually do. Like, I really feel like the club has grown. I feel like they're getting back to where they should be. And um, obviously, position-wise, you want to be up to top. But I feel like stature-wise, I feel like they're. Like, considered a big club, you know, and um, even playing in the games, like you played a Dublin Derby against Pats and Bowes, and like it's packed to the brims, and the fans are passionate. Like, it's just, it really is brilliant. Like, and it's uh, definitely, I definitely think the club is going places over the next few years. Yeah, I always thought once they got back to the Premier again that we'd see them develop further again. It's actually for someone like me who's seen them in the 90s and 2000s, and it's mental to think that they've been in the first division for most of the last decade. It's could you imagine Bohemians or Shamrock Rovers in the first division? Yeah. It's pretty much it's pre, for that long. It's pretty much the same thing, as far as I'm concerned. It's great to see them back anyway because I think um, the Premier Division needs the four big Dublin clubs, in my opinion. I think they have to be there. They garner so much interest that like as you said, the Shells Pats game. Like I mean, that game hasn't been available for years and. The crowd, both sets of fans were fantastic in that match and the atmosphere is brilliant and um, it's great to see that back as well. And how do you find the Shells fans? You feed off them? Yeah, well, playing against them, I didn't like them, but uh, <laughs> now... now they'll uh, smack you if you're playing against them, but they love you if you... <laughs> that's football, isn't it? 
yeah, it is. Um, it? No, I think they're brilliant. Like even yeah. when first game we played Cork away, like down the bottom stand uh, where the away fans are, like there was loads of them, and they were just singing the whole time. Flares, obviously after the match we won, we went down to them, and it's just brilliant, like to to see that and to see people supporting the club home and away. And then obviously you've got the home games, like even seeing we when we played Pats, I think there was maybe six or eight hundred Pats fans. So yeah. even just to have that there shows how Pats would value that game and how they value the the like potential between the clubs of the rivalry as well, you know. So I haven't really experienced much of that so far, apart from maybe Finn Harps and Derry, but that would be it like Yeah. No, that's actually that's great for you as well, because you're playing plenty of games of that. You obviously played in bowls as well. Um yeah. Before we go into that, the, your debut was against Cork, wasn't it? At Turner's Cross. Yeah, that was my. Uh, that would have been your full. Yeah. Debut. How did yeah, you How did you find yeah. playing in that match? Because uh, Cork, Turner's Cross, first say the season, you know their fans are fairly raucous as well. So that must have been a great result because you nicked it late on as well. So that must have given you a lot of confidence, actually. In fairness. Yeah, like you know, going into a first game of the season against anyone, you, you don't know where you stand because. Like, you're a bit cautious, you know, at the start. You're trying to suss each other out. You haven't seen, like, normally you'd see clips of teams. Like, when we were playing bowls, we would have seen clips of them against Sligo or whatever. But um, we were going in kind of off the back. Not, we knew a bit about them, but we hadn't seen them competitively, you know. And obviously Cork... Then again, sorry, just cut across you there as well. The fact that the likes of Cork have pretty much a brand new team as well. So how do you, mm. how do you judge that? You're only judging individuals, aren't you? How do you judge them as an actual team? That must be very difficult, actually. Yeah, because they wouldn't have had too many players that have been in the league over the last few years compared to what they had, say, over the last five years, like when they're competing at the top, you know. Um, a lot of loanees, lads from England and stuff. So we had to kind of do a bit of research on them. Um, and obviously when you're playing down there, the crowd, are, like, they get a good crowd. And it was the first game back for Shells in the Premier Division. So like there was a bit of, I don't know whether it would be expectation, but... For us, there was expectation on ourselves because we knew, right, if we get a win here, like, you're really shown, right, we're back. Do you know that kind of way? Um, whereas if you, if you lost, and then we had a couple of tough games. We had Dundalk, Pats, and Bowes. So if we lost the first game, like, you could go on to lose four games then, you know? So, yeah, you might get that into your head as well. That's yeah, the problem that's as well. Yeah. yeah. But um, actually, the, the dark game I was there and I've, I've logged that match I was in with the Shelburne fans and I thought they were brilliant, to be honest with you, because yeah. they were 2-0 down, I think, at half-time and um, you've obviously got back into it, but the fans kept singing, they kept going and they were... Sometimes you hear fans are slagging off the team and the players and that, but they weren't like that at all. They just kept supporting, kept supporting. And uh, I know he's lost the game, but it was a great moment when Gary Deegan got that, uh, that <laughs> fantastic strike. Uh, I was vlogging it myself. I nearly missed it because I thought there's no way Deegan's scoring this. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I, nearly, I nearly turned it off. I, I left it on for an extra couple of seconds. Like, is that Gary Deegan? No way. <laughs> He's a very yeah, good player. Sure. He's a very good player, but he wouldn't be known for his uh, left foot bangers from the edge of the area. Yeah. Would he? <laughs> no, no. Uh, no but, uh, yeah. How would you feel about the performance general that day? Because I know the weather was absolutely shite, basically, as well. It was rubbish. But um, how did you feel about the performance overall? I actually thought we were like we were comfortable considering who we were playing against. Um, mm. I thought like we let ourselves down for two moments, like, and that's the difference really when you're playing against quality opposition, like two goals. So you're you're going into halftime two 0 down. But I thought after when we came out of second half, like it would have been easy to just drop the heads and could have lost four 0 or whatever. But we we were right at it from the start, and that goal obviously gave us a massive boost. Um, but uh, yeah, it was disappointing in the end not to get a result because I thought there was definitely opportunities there to nick a point. Like, and um, but look, out of those games, you take the positives and you move on to the next, and we got the win against. Pat. As you say, even that's a great thing. Like, you're coming out of the game against Dundalk, haven't got promoters, disappointed you didn't get a result. That's a good thing at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Rather than yeah. coming out and look, we were absolutely battered. We were completely outclassed. It obviously wasn't like that at all. So. You know, as you say, I don't know, I thought maybe in the first half, maybe there was an element of maybe showing Dundalk a bit too much respect. Did you feel that a little bit? It looks yeah, like, but definitely, that wasn't definitely. the case. Which can happen against teams like that. And the second half was like, hang on a minute, look, 
let's go, let's go at them a bit. And as you say, he's did very well in the second half and another day could easily nick the draw there. Yeah, like I thought in the first half, we, like you said, we stood off them a bit. Like even like when Derek they passed back to the keeper, we kind of dropped off and like we should in the second half, we pressed them right high and you're going to force teams into mistakes then. So um, there was a massive difference in how we approached the first half to the second half, like, you know. Definitely. But then you brought that into the Pats game, which was the next game, I think, wasn't it? Which was a great result yeah. for Shepard, to be fair, um, to get one over on Pats. And it was a tight enough game, actually. But um, I thought Pats on the day found it very difficult once you scored to break his down. And that's something I know it was a Shelburne generally in the first division, very difficult to play against. And if you look at the four games as a whole, you might be disappointed with the Bowls one a little bit. But the four games as a whole, Shelburne have been very difficult to beat. And that's your starting point, I think, when you're coming up to a new league, essentially, as well, isn't it? Yeah, you want you want to be difficult to beat. You want to, mm-hmm. you don't want to be a team that someone looks at and goes, right, there's three points, you know. You want to be a team where if Dundalk are coming to play us or Rovers are coming to play us in Talca, like, they know they're going to be in for a tough game. And even when we're going to play Dundalk away and Rovers, like, we'll be looking at trying to get positive results. Obviously, they're quality teams, like, but we feel like we have that stature at the moment and we have the belief in, in ourselves as players and as a team, like, you know. Yeah, I think even the Bowles game, a lot of people were at the bowls Shelburne game and Bowles fans felt they were a little bit fortunate to, to win it. It wasn't as comfortable as the 2-0 sounds, you know, that kind of way. So that was another game he's obviously put in a performance as well, to a degree. But you're probably disappointed enough at the same time where he's coming out of that game. Yeah, I thought we were on top in the first half. We had a couple of chances. Um, We could have probably been one or two up at the break. And then second half, we came out a bit, I wouldn't say lax. We were just a bit, like, we didn't really step it up a gear. And obviously, we kind of knew balls would come out because they They didn't go as well. Yeah. 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 And then they got the goal. And, you know, goals change games. They change how they approached it. And, like, it was was disappointing, to be honest. even the way we conceded the goals, and then they kind of got on top then. So it fizzled out in the end, which is, which was disappointing for us. When you look at the four games as a whole, what would you say you've learned, maybe as a team, the most from the four games so far? Is there something in particular you might have learned, do you think? or Probably, like, not, not to, well, as a defender, like, not to switch yeah. off. Like, you can't really switch off because there's quality players and they can change games, you know? Um I think we've learned that we're quite solid defensively, not just as a back five, but the keeper as a unit, like from the That's front. Good, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think we're quite organised, so um, we want to keep that. But I think we can we can help ourselves out in the way, not the way we attack, but the way we we use our strengths. You know, like we've we've like we've experienced players with who've plenty of goals, the likes of Kilduff, Shepherd, and um, we've young hungry players as well like you know so we need to utilize that more because the quality's there so um but i think we realize that i think as a group you know i was slagging deegan earlier on but uh he's been a big plus hasn't he this season for shelburne like he's he's really competitive isn't he midfield he looks like to me he looks like a leader on the pitch i don't know if he he's vocal is he vocal on the pitch or what's the style yeah, he's, <laughs> he's vocal, yeah. Um, but he wouldn't be he wouldn't be like like vocal in the wrong ways, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like he, yeah. He's encouraging. He these... seems to lift the team from my point. From what I've seen, he seems to lift the team and the players yeah. around them, and that he's been a vital cog because it's a young enough team all round. I know you've experienced players, but it is a fairly young team, isn't it? Most teams are in the league, actually. Funnily enough, but um, no, he's been a big help. I think to you as well. You, you've been a help at the back for them as well, and then you have um, you're talking about the, the likes of Kabia as well. He's one to watch, isn't he as well? He actually got yeah. the winner against Pat as well, which was unusual from a header. But <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's seen it coming. He just moved and it was there, like you know. Um, but no, Jay's like Jay's is uh, really good. He's quick, strong. He's got all the attributes. So um, like he'll have a really bright future in the game, and he's willing to learn as well, which is very important for a young lad. So he's yeah. got good players around him to bring him on, um, and we've got a lot of we've got a lot of good young players like. Sean Quinn started down in Cork for yeah. us. He played brilliant. Um, Dale Rooney's still young. Like it's, it's um, like we've got a nice balance, you know. I think we've got a nice balance. Obviously, you've got uh, Deegs in the midfield, who's who's demanding. He demands standard. So 
like the young lads would look up to that and they'd want to hit a certain level, you know. Yeah, has Carl Shepard been a bit of an influence there as well? He's he looks like like I've seen the games he's played and he's uh he's played well in the games as well, actually. So has he been a good influence there in the group? Yeah, I think Shep's been brilliant. Um obviously I haven't played against him. I, I kind of knew how he played, but I didn't know exactly what he'd bring to a team that you'd be on, you know. Um but he's energetic, he's clever, he's cute, he definitely has experience in like even little things, winning fouls and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. You need that though, big time. <laughs> you do. No, you do because you can't be no, nice all the time. No. You need to take what you're given in the, in this league. Like so, he's been good. He's uh, I thought he played very well against Bowles. I thought he gave their left hole a, a tough time. It was just pity we couldn't capitalize on his crosses and stuff like that. Right, a few personal questions. The best player you played against in your career. Well, when I say personal, <laughs> um, so far. <laughs> when I was under 15s of Ireland, to play against Nathan Aki of Bournemouth. Really, yeah? Yeah, he was at, um, I think it was Fine Art at the time, and then he signed for Chelsea yeah. a year later. He was unbelievable. Like, he was just, like, a rock he came. I know he was only young, but, like, he was just everything as a centre-half. He could play, he could defend, he, he was... Uh, demanding of his players he had leadership like so he would be one definitely it must be interesting when you play with players like that at a young age and see their career develop and say oh, look that guy's with Bournemouth he's linked yeah. to Man City or whatever that must be interesting is it is it something yeah. you say I knew that would happen or yeah some you would say yeah. I knew it would happen and then yeah. some some you'd be disappointed in that they didn't make it to the top you yeah. know so yeah. And then there's obviously ones that are late bloomers too. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Oh, the best player you've played with so far in your career? Moussa Dembele off Leon. Did you play at with him? Fulham. He was at oh, Fulham, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For team, Fulham. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you've... Him or Pat Roberts. Do you know Pat Roberts? Patrick Roberts, he, yeah. yeah. Celtic, was he on loan yeah, with Celtic? Yeah, he was at Celtic, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, was, he was unbelievable. He used to play, he was younger than me, like, but he used to play yeah. up with the youth team. And him and, like, him and, we had him and Moose on the same youth team, so we had a good oh, youth team, you know? Yeah. God, I'm, yeah, you're, I'm always surprised because you don't know who's played with who and that, especially yeah, when you're yeah. playing. Like, it's always I talked to Pat Hoover and I said, who's the best player you ever played with? And he goes, Virgil van Dijk. And I was like, again, sorry. I said, he played against Virgil van Dijk. He goes, yeah, when he was at Oxford, he played against him when he was at Southampton. And uh, he said it was a friendly, but he said still the quality that was there. And he said he played with a cigar in his mouth, but still. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. You get surprised when you hear some of the yeah. names. Like, yeah. Because uh, you were probably trying to put two and two together when he said that. You were like, you didn't play against Liverpool or Celtic. Like, you know? You're trying to connect the dots, like, you know, and then yeah. nation comes. But uh, what's the best moment in your career so far? Best moment. Um, Jesus, that's a good one. Um, I had a few as youth, but I I wouldn't consider them as like playing, maybe playing for the un, getting your first calf Ireland under age or yeah, something like that. I captain captain the Ireland, and that was Pretty obviously cool. proud. <laughs> um, staying up last year with Finn Harps was a really good achievement, considering like the Sweet. doubts we would have had. So that would probably be the senior one. Like I'm I'm hoping that I can get a few medals as well, you know? Exactly, yeah. They're, they're still to come, I suppose. Uh, the worst moment in your career so far? <laughs> Jesus. Um, probably when we lost 6-0 six, six with Longford against Cork. I was only 19 or 20, but Jesus, had a bad game. But, uh, yeah, that would just be individual, but... Um, yeah, other than that, maybe... I don't know what else you'd say. Maybe we, we missed out on the playoffs with Longford a couple of years ago and that was kind of like the final straw for me. Like, you know, I thought we we actually had a really good team, but we let ourselves down in a couple of games during the year and then we lost to Drod and they went into the playoffs then. So that's football. Yeah. Um, what's your best away day or favourite away ground playoff in the League of Ireland anyway? Uh, Tala. Robert. Just because of the size of the stadium and that, I suppose, is it? Yeah, it has like a pro obviously every stadium is unique in its own way, but oh, yeah. like Rovers is just it feels like it's the the most complete stadium in the league. The pitch yeah. is always like even if it was raining like this, the pitch is always 
top notch, like you know. So yeah, Tala. That's true. If you had to pick a short number, what number would you pick, or do you care about things like that? <laughs> uh, I'm not really fussy, but probably five. Five. Would you? What number are you? Have you got Two. a number? Two. Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back like the old days. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> Who's the most skillful player at Shelburne? We'll finish off with these questions. Skillful. Um, I'd say maybe Jays. Jays or. Yeah, I'll, I'll say Jays, yeah. Yeah, from the outside looking in, it, w- it would appear to be that way as well. Hardest trainer? Um. Hardest trainer, maybe I'd put myself in there, but I can't say that. Uh, maybe Luke, Luke Byrne or Deegan, maybe just for his overall like stature, like demands yeah. and stuff like that. So, so you probably got Deegan ahead of Luke Byrne, just about. Oh, uh, I mean, we give, no, we, we, we give them the joint, will we? We give them a joint, yeah, joint, yeah, What's yeah, we're all mates. <laughs> who has the worst taste in music or have you discovered that yet you're not there long um, Georgie Poynton because he plays the music so I'm going to say him <laughs> yeah um, who's the moaniest trainer Ooh, or who's player just the moaniest person in the squad in general you can't stop moaning <laughs> I'd say Shepard really yeah and why is that <laughs> moaning little niggles here and there you know I wouldn't say it's a bad thing like but like you know yeah uh, I'd say probably him yeah would he moan if he didn't get the ball yeah yeah even if the you made the right decision to play it somewhere else <laughs> probably not but he he, no. he let you know like you know if you make a bad pass and he's available yeah. you know he's going to say it to you like he's you know. going to let you know straight away yeah oh. Hey, you don't mind that. You don't mind that. No, no, no. Who's the hard man in the squad? You know, Deegan. <laughs> the cover and the book inside are the same thing there, aren't they, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that statement about uh, you can't judge a book by its cover, you can with that one. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Who's the most vain who can't get out of the mirror? Um, can't say yourself. <laughs> Uh, Jesus uh, I'm going to say Jack Brady Speaker. Really yeah? yeah Yeah He's a big, big guy that. isn't he Isn't Jack Brady Yeah, yeah. No that's Polly yeah. Polly's bigger <laughs> Yeah Jack loves himself They're both <laughs> culty But anyway <laughs> oh, You're not a Kildare man though I am yeah But I wouldn't consider myself A <laughs> that, culty a proper culture. I'm a mead man myself So I suppose it wouldn't be A proper culty either you know, That's yourself. it we're both, on, we're both on the verge But they'd probably see us As culties <laughs> Exactly that's it Right Daniel That's about it So thanks very much For coming on Really appreciate no it And uh, really enjoyed that So thanks a million Fair play to you No problem Keith Thanks for having me on Thank you no.